hear someone running. Oh my god. 30 degree heat. He's out for a jog. He's a nutter. Can you wait back? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody told me a story of a bloke, an American, who decided to walk across the desert from here to um, some other town that was about three day journey. And of course, he got lost. And um, his girlfriend went out into the desert and took a bottle of Tabasco. Because he loved Tabasco and left it in the desert. So uh, thinking, the thinking behind it was that if he found it, she, he'd know that she was looking for him. <laughs> Did he find it? No, but they found him. She was a big help, though, wasn't she? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's always best to have the right kind of seasoning. <laughs> Not to be too predictable, we've started our journey in the middle. And what a lot of middle Australia has. Wow, it's amazing. Out here, there's nothing. Except this. Mission to travel to the heart of this incredible country and its men and discover their very essence. Is the image of the macho Aussie male true or not? On our quest, we'll meet the men of the outback and hang out at the Great Barrier Reef. We'll drop in on remote Thursday Island before heading to the middle of nowhere for a booze up in the desert with thousands of blokes. Part of being on a journey is ending up in the places that everybody else ends up in, like the middle of a car park looking at a rock. After traveling for days to get here, everyone does the same thing. Formerly known as Ayers Rock, Uluru is one of the most historic sites in Africa. <laughs> Sorry. You're right. <laughs> Formerly known as Ayers Rock, Uluru is the most historic site in Australia. It's certainly the most famous, which is why it's chosen as the starting place for the Olympic flame this year. The torch left here in June, and it travels 12,000 miles to Sydney for September for the start of the Games. It's um, a giant monolith, you know, it's, it's a single rock and it's uh, practically the geographical centre of Australia and it's very sacred to the Aboriginal people. It's got great connections with their past and their stories of creation, which they call dream time. And apparently men would travel for hundreds, possibly thousands of miles to come here to attend traditional ceremonies. When we live here, we're going to, um, when we leave here, we're going to take the same route as the torch and along the way, hopefully, meet some of the people, in particular the men, and find out what makes them the way they are. Because we're actually not going to live here, are we? Probably not. No. No. We'll see, leave here. Australia's a country of great diversity, and we're going to try and see as much of that as we can. So we're travelling all through the outback, the coastal areas, and the big cities to see what we can see. You had to pick me up on it, didn't you? Yeah. Can we have a look in the back of your, your wagon? Yeah. Just, yeah. To, just to see what you're up against. These two Is campers from Sydney have paused on their trip to view the spectacle. Are they typical Australian men? They don't seem to have any beer. Yeah, mud crab nets. Mud crab nets, can I have those? Yeah, we got a couple of mud crab Where, what, that, that's fresh water? Yeah, oh, uh, salt water, but they ester on, sort of brackish water. Yeah. Like a fish head in the centre, and his didn't have a hole in it. The crab actually ate a hole through the net. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of fish head. Yeah. So, they've got claws on them about the size of your hand, so. Uh, well, now we've got your mate, mate to take everything over there, and um, we'll move on. <laughs> yeah. Matt Martin look like a customs officer, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> just no. Right, just uh, get around the back of your car. Really and, uh, interesting there. No. Show me all your yeah. personal belongings, from please. London. You don't... Why do they keep the underwear? Mm. Yeah. There's the mystery. Only one pair, three weeks. Space, the silence, the presence of that rock. 
is awe-inspiring. We're about 90 kilometers outside of Alice Springs. We've got another 20 kilometers to go to. We're in the middle of nowhere. We're just on the edge of nowhere here. And we're gonna meet Noel Fullerton. Camel man. Yeah, who keeps camels. And still no kangaroos. No, we haven't seen a single kangaroo. I want to see some kangaroos. We so saw there was a former kangaroo on the road. Formerly known as kangaroo, now more like uh, sort of a, a glove and muff set. We're a bit wary of Noel, not least because of his training methods. What you do, you stand a row of wattles along the pole, and you go along and you break them with your bum. And when you can break them and not bleed, you're ready to ride. <laughs> that sounds about right. You got one chance of ten of breaking a leg, but if you break a leg, we've got to shoot you. Because it's, cheap. it's too expensive to get you out by the Yeah, it is. And uh, fatality is a lot cheaper than injuries these days. Really, and, uh, just grab those. Grab those, will you? Thank you? I'll take those for you, Martin. Don't worry. Okay, <laughs> that's good. I'm getting the hang of this. Noel lives for and with his camels. They're a key attraction for tourists. <coughs> breath oh. Was that breath or fast? No, it was breath. <coughs> oh. <laughs> breath. Oh. He won't fight you. Yeah, it's not, it's not the, yeah, put your hand in there. Here's the smell. Oh, you sweetheart. Oh, yeah. Give him a kiss. <laughs> Hey, what? He's... It's the smell. It's look, at him, look at those. Oh, look. Give me a kiss. No, he wouldn't hurt anyone. Noel's going to take us bush bashing and turn us into outback men. <coughs> yeah, right. Well, if he goes to get up while I'm doing this, we've got to just lean back, all right? Now, when, if he starts galloping with you, yeah, just stand up your saddle and hang on to there. Okay. And belt him with a whip and just scream your head off. What, now? No, when you go to rest. Oh, <laughs> now. Oh, that's good. Right. Easy peasy. Yeah. Hup, hup. Where are you going? You want some of this tree? OK, eat the tree. <laughs> See? <laughs> See? <laughs> Mastered. Breathe okay. in Martin's That's face. Really Good. If we'd been early settlers, this would have been our only way to get about. Well, I'm hard to the right as you come around the corner. Shorten your rein, hard to the right. Come on. Go on there, son. That's it. That's good. It's all in the handling, you see. And the rhythm. You realise that it's the harshness of the land that makes the men out here so resilient, and they have to be, just to survive. Go on, Charcoal. No, run away. That's it. I'll show you where he is. Go on, then. Whoa! Hey, 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 hey. Oh, my God! Woo! Hey! <laughs> When I came to this country, we still had a couple of camels in the police force at Fink. And I said to the sergeant, you know, what about these camels, Sarge? And he said, son, they kick in all directions, they spit, they bite, they crap on you and they piss on you. Don't have anything to do with them, and I haven't. You haven't? <laughs> but they policed from the back of camels, yeah? Oh, they things? did, yeah. Well, it was the, you know, the most suitable means of transport. <laughs> That's called practice. Yeah. Having left the police and the camels behind, Andy McNeil is now mayor of Alice Springs. Yeah, you're over with me, you're out of bounds, but we won't worry about it. Scared. Every morning at seven, Andy meets his two mates, Terry and Ted, to tee off. That happens to be the town clerk that you're picking on, right? Right. <laughs> so just like he's off. <laughs> Alice has always been a man's town. It began life in the 1870s with the Overland Telegraph Line, in the days when men were men and women knew their place, which was not here. Even now, as the tourist capital of the centre of Australia, it still feels like a man's town. Am I right in thinking you've kind of been here as long as Alice has, practically? I've been here 41 years. I came from Sydney. I joined the police force here in 1959, and I retired in 92, and... Uh, campaigned for a month and woke up as a mayor. And Just after a month? Yeah, and then I had to find out what a mayor does. <laughs> it's like a policeman, you're dealing with people all the time. And in a town like this, 27,000 people, you know everyone. You want to drop on here? Terry, watch your back, mate. 
So you get to know uh, everyone in town. Everyone blames you for everything. <laughs> Tell you all your troubles. I'm not being funny here, but is the mates the mates thing as defined over here? Is it like a second marriage sort of thing? Well, I'd hate to wake up beside either of these fellas, I can tell you that. <laughs> Mates are people you can turn to if you've got a problem or something like, we never borrow money off each other, anything like that, you know? I mean, that's the quickest way to lose friends anyway. It's just someone that you feel comfortable being with. In Australia, I suppose it's a bit like, uh, not a husband and wife relationship, but you probably get on better with the fellas than you do with the women. Now, well, let's get that straight. <laughs> <laughs> In a happy, not gay sort of way. In a town as a town as big as Alice, you see people every day. Sure. So even if you knock off work and like you, workmates become very good mates out of work because they still all live in the same uh, area and they all you know do things socially together. <laughs> I'd get behind him, Kevin. We're getting behind him now, Martin. <laughs> Don't try him so hard, mate. Yeah. Easy, easy, easy. Look out of here. Oh, <laughs> I think I went through your legs. I'm playing on that one. <laughs> They're supposed to be on your side, you know. <laughs> Better go and get that. Mate, you're not doing much for the golf. Just keep that catching on the top of the ball. Where are we going? Which way are we see going? See that flag? Yeah, little yeah. one there. I can't even see the flag. It's a way to get it out. And into the other one. Satisfying when you hit a good one, isn't it? I, I, I mean, I'm imagining that. <laughs> Why do I keep doing that? It's a good system. I make the holes, and Ted follows along behind and fills them in. Oh, that's what that... I thought that was for your fags. I thought that was for your cigarettes. <laughs> Come down, Paul. It'll be all right. Yep. That's well trained. <laughs> We're heading the right direction, mate. In case you couldn't tell, this is the first game of golf I've ever played. And despite being crap at it, I have to admit, it was a beautiful way to start the day in these dramatic surroundings. Even if I didn't have wheels on my clubs. So we all know that Australians have always been strong swimmers. And there's no doubt this year they'll be strongly represented in the Olympics again, what with the likes of Grant Hackett and Kieran Perkins, and of course the world, new world record breaking, Ian Thorpe. So after my dusty day yesterday with all those camels, I thought I'd go for a swim, but of course I can't because it's winter and the pool's closed. And, um, oh, hi mate, how are you doing? I was just wondering, you know, when you've got um, a, a 28 degree, uh, 88 degree heat, or I don't know what that translates into Australian, why, why the pool's closed? Well, in local terms, this is a cold day. A cold yep. day? This, You're is kidding. A cold this is one of the hottest days of our summer in England. Well, that's right. Well, you... <laughs> yeah. 